What can we learn about the context of Jesus' life from contemporary historical accounts? Often we look at the events of Jesus' life as occurring outside of time or without historical context. However, looking at the historical accounts of the lives of people who appear in Scripture's description of Jesus' life provide us with information essential to our understanding of the faith. Today we will look at the lives of King Herod, the Magi, and Pontius Pilate. History teaches us that Herod was a controversial figure in the Jewish world who was known for his violence. King Herod the Great is known in the Bible for his interaction with the Magi and how he killed all the young boys in Bethlehem. However, he is also mentioned in Acts, which includes how God struck him down and how he was eaten by worms when he died. Herod was an unlikely king. He was not a Jew, but actually an Edomite, who were one of the enemy, who were some of the enemies of the Jews. His family did not have a royal background. His father, Antip Antipater, had become chief minister of, Jude of Judea after he saved Julius Caesar's life and became his friend. Antipater eventually made his son the governor of Galilee. Herod became allied with Mark Antony, who also helped him rise to power to be named king of the Jews. Herod, however, felt that his position as king was unstable because he was not really a Jew. So he married the sister of Aristopolis III, who was the man that was actually supposed to be king. He named him high priest to try and satisfy the people. However, one hot summer day, he invited the young man, Aristopolis III, over for a meeting. Since the day was so hot, Herod invited him to cool off in his pool. Many of his servants were also in the pool, and Herod instructed them to dunk Aristopolis underwater as if in sport. However, they kept doing this and dunking him over underwater until he had drowned. So this was pretty obviously murder. After Mark Antony was defeated by Augustus Caesar, in 30 BC, Herod was left in an awkward position because he had remained loyal to Mark Anthony, who had helped him gain political power. But instead of flattering Augustus Caesar, Herod decided to be honest about their relationship. According to Josephus, he said, quote, You will wish to know not whose friends, but what sort of friends I have been, unquote. Augustus's point is that it is more important that he was a good and loyal friend to Anthony than the fact that he hadn't agreed with Augustus. In an attempt to please both the Romans and the Jewish people, Herod commissioned a new temple for the Jews with a Greco-Roman with Greco-Roman features and architecture to please the Romans in power. Despite all his efforts, efforts, Herod's position remained dubious. His secret police were constantly hunting down his enemies. Even members of his own family were not safe. Macrobius says that once Augustus Caesar remarked as a joke, quote, it is better to be Herod's pig than his son, unquote. Of course, this is a joke because Herod wouldn't have had a pig because he was pretending to be a Jew. My second point is that the Magi's visit is shown to be very different from the way that it is traditionally portrayed. In, portrayed. The Magi were not simply wise men or kings, but priests and astrologists from the Zoroastrian religion. They were considered to be quite an anonymous group throughout the Roman world. 
The Magi were priests of the Zoroastrian religion, who worshipped fire as their god. When Matthew wrote that they, the wise men were from the east, it more literally translates to from the rising of the sun, meaning that they were from the Parthian Empire, which was centered in Persia and was a major enemy of the Roman Empire at the time. Long story short, because of the excessive taxation brought by Anthony and Antony and Cleopatra on the Parthians, they preferred to see an anti-Roman ruler on the neighboring throne of Judea. When opponents of Rome promised them golden slaves to invade, they conquered, conquered Jerusalem and Herod was forced to flee, barely escaping with, with his life. So, many years later, when Herod was king again, you can imagine the effect that the, appear that the appearance of these creepy Parthian sorcerers would have had on him, when they showed up and told him that a new king had been born. But what in the world were the Magi looking for? Some argue that the Magi <clears throat> were looking for a star that they believed predicted the birth of a ruler. There are myths that describe this manifestation of a messianic figure of fire and light called the Socians. To the Zoroastrians, Socians meant, quote, one who brings benefits. The Avesta, the Zoroastrians' holy book, says, quote, he will be the victorious Zoroastrian, Zoroastrians by name, and he will renovate the world. He will benefit the entire physical world, and he will establish, establish eternal life." Unquote. The text also talks about how he will be conceived by a virgin, and how, will, how he will be killed on a tree, so far as to describe a kind of resurrection, creating parallels to Jesus' life and death. So thus you can see that when the Magi brought tr their traditional gifts to Jesus, it was similar gifts that they would traditionally bring to sacrifice to the gods. They basically thought he was a god, quite literally, which he was. But anyway, um, interestingly, Jesus was not the only one who was visited by the Magi in the ancient world. They made a similar visit to the young emperor, Nero, who was quite a different character. My third point is that Pilate's work, weak position in Rome and his bad reputation with the population of Judea offer important insights into the trial of Jesus. Little is known about Pilate's background or childhood. His family was likely lower class, but he was able to become a soldier in the equestrian order and the governor of Judea, of Judea. Nonetheless, Pontius Pilate was an outsider in Roman politics. He was wealthy and most likely had a powerful patron to have helped him obtain his position. He was the fifth governor of Judea under the reign of crazy emperor Tiberius. Pilate's duties were primarily military, but he was also head of the judicial system the taxation system, and the police force. <clears throat> Pilate was likely closely allied to the Sadducees. Pilate retained the same high priest, Caiaphas, for his entire tenure, but he was also removed at the same time as Pilate. Pilate also used the temple treasury to conduct an aqueduct, which he could not have done without cooperation from the Sadducees. Scripture indicates that he, that he worked with the Sadducees in the execution of Jesus. According to John, when Pilate tried to set Jesus free, the Jewish leaders chanted, quote, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Unquote. When, you, when we usually read this, this verse, we think, 
oh, the Jewish people just mean he's not loyal to the rightful emperor if he is, if he won't kill Jesus. But they might have meant something else. It is possible that they were referring to the title friend of Caesar that Pilate might have held. It would refer to close advisors to the emperor. Pilate was not well liked by the Jewish population. He triggered riots when he brought Roman standards into Jerusalem. Because the images of Caesar were offensive, the Jewish people got very mad. When Pilate threatened the protest the protesters with death, they themselves asked to be killed. So he was like, I can't really do anything. So he just removed the standards. Again, Pilate placed Roman shields in Herod's palace. The people complained to Tiberius, who angrily made Pilate remove the shields. When a riot began following Pilate's decision to, make, to take money from the temple treasury to build the aqueduct, Pilate ordered his troops to beat the rioters with his clubs, and the mob was dispersed, although many were killed or trampled by horses. So you can see why he wasn't such a popular figure. We know from Roman sources that Pilate's efforts at cracking down on messianic movements, like killing Jesus, was a persistent part of his career. Pilate was removed from office after he slaughtered a group of armed Samaritans, led by a messianic figure who was trying to find artifacts left and buried by Moses. Because we often think about the events of Jesus' life without historical context, historical accounts of the lives of people who appear in scripture's description of Jesus' life, provides us with information essential to our understanding of the faith, in particular the lives of King Herod, the Magi, and Pontius Pilate. Thank you.